What is going on guys? Solomonster here, live from Tampa, Florida. I am on location. I am in town for what I thought was going to be a very relaxing weekend. A weekend that uh, I was looking forward to for a very long time. And the Rumble is obviously one of my favorite events. It's been a while since I've been to a WWE event. It's been about five years. So I was looking forward to it. And then, of course, as has been the case a lot recently in wrestling, both in WWE and in AEW, uh, the shit hit the fan. And so here we are now where I am coming on here. Instead of just talking about Royal Rumble predictions, which was my plan for today, we're going to run through all the matches. And we're going to do that. We're going to do that a little bit later on. But there is more important news to discuss, unfortunately. Not the first time that I've had to come on here and talk about Vince McMahon. And I keep hoping and I keep thinking that it is going to be the final time I will have to come on here and talk about this man. Because I thought that we were rid of him. Not completely. He's still around. He still has the same shitty mustache. But with him being out of creative power in the company, he's largely been relegated to a ceremonial title. And I was hoping that we wouldn't have to talk about him and his escapades for a very long time, if ever again. And I was on the flight, I wasn't even on the flight because my flight got delayed, but I'm sitting there at the airport. I'm looking at my phone and I see everything blowing up on social media. Vince McMahon, Wall Street Journal. I thought to myself, here we go again. Now what? Now what, what could possibly be in the Wall Street Journal about Vince McMahon today that we have not already read about? And then I start reading through the nature of the lawsuit that has been filed against him and some of the allegations and the very specific allegations and stories about him. And it's a good thing that I had not yet eaten lunch because I feel like it would have come back up on me. We're going to talk about this Vince McMahon stuff and then we will get into the Royal Rumble. But I, I do have to, as I sit here, and I, again, I'm in town for the Royal Rumble, but it almost feels completely insignificant now. You know, in light of what we're talking about here, in light of these allegations and, and just all of the disgusting, just putrid things that have been reported over the last 24 hours. I, I hate that I even have to come on here and talk about this. But it's dominating the news headlines. It will continue to dominate the news headlines. And there is no telling where this is going to go. So we're going to talk about this. But before I do, I want to just say that this is... Sound off episode 846. It is Friday, January 26th, 2024. You know, this is not my first bonus sound off of the week. We had the sound off on Sunday. There was another sound off, episode 845, late on Tuesday that dropped with breaking news on the WWE Netflix deal. Talking about The Rock joining the TKO board of directors. And boy, how does he feel this week of all weeks that Dwayne Johnson ends up on the board of a company that now you go to the New York Post, you go to TMZ, you go to the Wall Street Journal, you go to Deadline.com, you go to the Hollywood Reporter, you go to Variety, you go to all of these mainstream news outlets, and the headlines are all about Vince McMahon defecating on people. I'm sure The Rock is very happy that he has joined the TKO Board of Directors and was shown standing almost side by side with Vince McMahon at the New York Stock Exchange the other day. I'm sure he must be very proud of that. But we covered that on episode 845. And now here we are again. I, I can't remember the last time I did three proper sound ups in the span of less than a week. But I guess there's a first time for everything. And we're not even done yet because we still have the Royal Rumble coming up this weekend. I do want to give a quick shout out to three people uh, who did drop uh, PayPal donations over the last few days. Uh, and because they're... <laughs> I don't want to sit here and tell you there will not be another sound off this weekend because who the fuck knows... But I want to say thank you to the Portland pop star Paul Hamilton, Night Stalker Nayef Al Safar, and Velvet Revolver Robert Murray. So thank you guys very much for uh, your support. Uh, much appreciated. So let's just get right into this here because the Wall Street Journal headline was Vince McMahon accused of sex trafficking, WWE staffer that he paid to keep quiet. 
And that right there, that term right there, that is what sets this apart from anything else that we have heard so far. We've heard a lot about Vince McMahon and having affairs, extramarital affairs with people and sleeping around with employees. And there's no excuse for that either. Somebody in his position. I was shocked by the number of people the last time we talked about this who didn't quite understand the concept. Oh, well, what's wrong with that? You know, what's wrong with Vince McMahon? Hey, you know, he's a grown man. He can sleep with whoever he wants to. Not understanding the position that he is in, it puts him in a very unique position. It gives him a very unique power, a hold that he has over people. There's a reason why there are codes of conduct at a lot of companies that prohibit that sort of thing. But of course, he'll always have his defenders and they turn a blind eye. Oh, well, I don't see what's so wrong about that. Well, this takes it up to a whole other level here. This is a whole other level of depraved and disgusting. I'm going to read to you from this article, and I'm sure many of you have even read through the complaint itself. There is a 67-page complaint that you can go yourself and you can read online, the filing from this woman's lawsuit. I'm not going to get into all of the gory details because I just don't think it's necessary, and frankly, I think it's fucking disgusting. But we are going to get into some of it here. So if there is anybody out there who doesn't want to hear about that or is, you know, in a position where, you know, again, maybe they've been through something and, and they don't need to be hearing about specific acts of assault and things of that nature, uh, I did want to put that warning out there here at the beginning. But this is from the story. I'll mix in my thoughts here as we go along. I found myself getting angrier and angrier the deeper I got into all of this stuff. It, it's literally a case where just when you think, okay, it can't possibly get any worse, it somehow got worse. It says, a woman who received the payout from WWE boss Vince McMahon has accused McMahon, the company, and a former executive of sex trafficking in a new lawsuit that raises questions about the breadth of an internal company probe conducted by a law firm last year. Janelle Grant, a former employee at WWE headquarters, said in a lawsuit filed Thursday that she was abused and sexually exploited by McMahon while he was chief executive. She alleged that McMahon lured her with promises of career advancement, and then he allegedly exploited her and trafficked her to other men inside the company. Grant signed a non-disclosure agreement in 2022 in which McMahon agreed to pay $3 million to her for her not to discuss their relationship or to disparage him, which is totally normal behavior for someone who hasn't done anything wrong. The WWE received an anonymous tip in 2022, that was uh, an anonymous email that they got, about the relationship and started a board investigation which uncovered other payments by the CEO to women. Her lawsuit said McMahon stopped making payments under the 2022 deal after an initial $1 million installment. The suit seeks to avoid the agreement, or void the agreement rather, and unspecified financial damages. Now, pause there for a second here, because this is only one example of a woman that Vince McMahon allegedly consorted with and had signed an NDA. And so the question has to be raised here, depending on how all of this plays out, because she wants this, you know, the, the whole NDA, she wants it to be rendered null and void. If that were to be the case, if this were to go to a court, if this were to go to a trial, if there was some kind of a verdict that was rendered... And there was a court that agreed with her and her lawyer and decided, you know what, this NDA is not valid. What could the implications be for all of the other people, all of the other women who have signed NDAs? Would they thus be released from their NDAs? If the language in this one is the same throughout, if it was the same stock NDA, let's say, that you know Jerry McDevitt or the company had these women sign, if one is rendered null, how might that affect the others? And if so, if suddenly those people aren't bound by a non-disclosure agreement, might they come forward and reveal details about their own relationship with Vince McMahon? So that's a whole powder keg that could very well explode at a later date. It says McMahon and his attorney, Jerry McDevitt, did not immediately respond to requests for comment on Thursday. Representatives for the WWE also did not immediately respond. Jerry McDevitt, for those who don't know, uh, Vince McMahon's longtime lawyer, he retired last year, said he was you know, getting old. He was, he was getting to that age where he was ready to call it a day. And so I don't believe he is actually representing Vince McMahon anymore. He's not representing the company. I, I, my belief is that he is not 
officially representing Vince McMahon. I don't know who is representing Vince McMahon, uh, but that is the update on Jerry McDevitt. Even though they mention him, that doesn't necessarily mean he'll be representing him. McDevitt said in 2022 that the woman, whose name was not yet public, had not made any allegations of harassment. In a statement when the Wall Street Journal first reported on McMahon's $3 million settlement, WWE said that the relationship was consensual and that it was taking seriously the allegations that he had engaged in misconduct. McMahon briefly retired from WWE in July of 2022 following the reporting by the Journal that revealed payouts to multiple women who had alleged sexual misconduct. The Journal reported that the board's independent directors had retained law firms Simpson, Thatcher, and Bartlett to conduct an investigation. That investigation found $14.6 million in payments by the CEO to women who had accused him of sexual misconduct out of roughly $20 million that should have been booked as business expenses. In November of 2022, WWE said the board investigation was completed and the company restated past securities filings. McMahon repaid the company for the cost of the investigation and returned soon after. Janelle Grant actually claims that she was never interviewed as part of any investigation. That is what she claimed now. It was a third party conducting the investigation. It was not WWE, uh, you know, internally conducting the investigation. They did have a third party conduct it, but the claim is that she was never interviewed. The lawsuit filed in a Connecticut federal court describes in graphic detail her account of interactions with the businessman and TV personality. She alleged that McMahon and another WWE executive locked her in an office in WWE's headquarters in Stamford, Connecticut on June 15, 2021, and took turns sexually assaulting her while other staff were working. In the middle of another workday on June 23rd, McMahon locked Grant inside his private locker room at WWE's offices and forced himself on her over a massage table. Later that day, McMahon's personal assistant delivered $15,000 in Bloomingdale's gift cards to Grant in her office. The suit also includes screenshots of explicit text messages that McMahon allegedly sent to Grant. A May 2020 message said, I'm the only one who owns you and controls who I want to fuck you. Of course, they censored the word. Grant alleged that McMahon shared nude photos and explicit videos of her without consent with other WWE employees, unnamed executives and stars, and directed her to have sex with them. The suit cited a July 2020 text that said others at WWE wanted to have sex with her after seeing photos on McMahon's phone. And the group laughed when he told them she may scream and try to say no, although it would be difficult to say anything with a blank down her throat. Now he referred to them, allegedly he referred to these people as her fan club, uh, and they included in the suit screenshots of these alleged text messages uh, that he sent her and shared these photos with about a dozen different people on the tech team. I mean, who knows as far as talent and other executives, uh, but even, even people on the tech team Apparently, he was passing his phone around, showing photos. They were yucking it up and having a grand old time. She alleged that the company diverted attention away from McMahon's abuse by focusing on the accounting for the payouts. Others at WWE knew about McMahon's misconduct, but worked to conceal the wrongdoing, according to the suit. Simpson Thatcher did not immediately respond to requests for comment. McMahon, at a WWE event in April of 2022, briefly left the company later that year and returned in early 2023. Uh, that is, uh, they have a photo of him. They all I've had to look at over the last 24 hours are photos of Vince McMahon. And so they had a photo here of him from an event in April 22. They get into the whole idea of him leaving and then coming back, which we've documented before. But the lawsuit alleges <clears throat> that she met McMahon in March of 2019 after an introduction from a manager in her apartment building McMahon lived in the penthouse of the same building, and she was looking for a job after her parents had passed away. When they met, McMahon allegedly made promises of a job at WWE and showered her with gifts. During meetings that were supposed to be about the job, he greeted her in his underwear and repeatedly asked for hugs. 
Then the suit said he pressured her into sexual activities in return for employment and warned her to stay quiet about their interactions. Grant began working in WWE in June of that year as an administrator coordinator, a position that McMahon created specifically for her in their legal department. She says she expressed concerns that the job felt unearned, but McMahon told her all she needed to do was not tell anyone and that it just has to look legit. Colleagues complained about overflowing inboxes, but Grant had little work. So imagine how the other employees must have been feeling. Here's this woman who's supposed to be helping out. Their work is overflowing. What exactly does this person do? Nobody knows. Meanwhile, McMahon allegedly sent her sexually explicit messages and his sexual demands increased. He forcefully used sex toys on her, including dildos he named after WWE wrestlers, causing her bruising and bleeding. She alleges that she complained to McMahon and made attempts to end the relationship. In March of 2020, McMahon began sharing sexually explicit photographs and videos of her with other men including other WWE executives, and a former UFC heavyweight champion with whom WWE was actively trying to sign to a new contract. In a May 2020 encounter, McMahon defecated on her head during a threesome. This is according to the lawsuit. I, I think that was the part where I basically put the phone down and said, I think I've, I've seen enough. I mean, how much worse could it get? How depraved do you need to be? In one horrible encounter, Vince forced her to have a threesome without protection where, and again, they're talking about this story here, uh, he had defecated on her head, left to go shower, while the other man, who was not identified, had sex with her. Her mental and physical health deteriorated so badly that McMahon sent her in in November to a celebrity doctor for sessions at an alternative clinic where she never received any receipts or bills. McMahon also paid $20,000 to a surgeon on her behalf, according to the suit. McMahon recruited people to have sex with her as well, including WWE's former head of talent relations, John Laurinaitis. Another name. I was hoping I would never have to say his name again either. And now here we are talking about Johnny Ace yet again. One of the most useless figures in WWE history. And the easy fall guy when that story first broke a couple of years ago. You knew when the dominoes started to fall, Johnny Ace would be gone and he ain't ever coming back. But clearly he was involved in this whole sordid situation here. He's named as a defendant in this lawsuit. McMahon directed her to visit Laurinaitis at his hotel room where she had sex with him prior to the start of work days. I've left that hotel feeling bad about myself every time, she told McMahon. In May of 2021, McMahon allegedly told her that her presence in the legal department was holding up the hiring of a new general counsel for the company and thus transferred her to the talent relations department, reporting to Laurinaitis. McMahon and Laurinaitis started her in a lower level position, but promised that she would soon be promoted to vice president. McMahon controlled her professional and personal lives and subjected her to degradation. In the June 2021 encounter inside the WWE offices, the suit said McMahon and Laurinaitis forced themselves on her and took turns restraining her for the other while saying no means yes and take it bitch. Laurinaitis, a former wrestler known as Johnny Ace and longtime executive, left the company in 2022. He has not publicly commented on his departure because there's nothing for him to say. He's fucking slime. He's better off keeping his mouth shut. In July of 2021, McMahon instructed Grant to create personalized sexual content for a WWE superstar that he was trying to re-sign. The suit did not name the pro wrestler, but described him both as a UFC fighter and WWE talent. People familiar with the matter identified the wrestler as Brock Lesnar, one of WWE's biggest names. Lesnar did not immediately respond to requests for comment. The suit said that McMahon shared the explicit photos with the star and informed Grant that, quote, he likes what he sees. After the star agreed to a new WWE contract, McMahon texted Grant in August of 2021 
to say that part of the deal was fucking you. That December, McMahon gave Grant's personal cell phone number to the WWE star. The wrestler asked her to send a video of herself urinating, and after she did, he called her a bitch. That same month, the suit said, the star expressed a desire to, quote, set a play date, but a snowstorm disrupted his travel plans, and she ultimately used the weather and COVID-19 as an excuse to back out. Thankfully, we're nearing the end here. In January of 2022, McMahon told Grant that his wife, Linda McMahon, had discovered the relationship and he pressured her to sign an NDA in exchange for payments. The CEO warned Grant of reputational ruin that included pornographic content he had of her. He paid her about a million dollars in February and later stopped making the payments. After she signed the NDA, McMahon continued the abuse, according to the suit. It alleged that he forced Grant to perform oral sex on him the last time they met and then attempted to traffic her to the WWE star in March of 2022. She texted the star explicit photos as directed by McMahon, but they did not meet. The lawsuit seeks a judgment that the NDA is invalid under state and federal law and compensatory and punitive damages under other laws, including the Trafficking Victims Protection Act. So that is, I mean, I, I don't even know where to begin with that. I mean, that is just repulsive. And yet repulsive still doesn't seem like a strong enough word to describe everything that I just talked about here. And I also think it's absolutely ridiculous that you could have a situation like this because what we're talking about here, let's be very clear, if this is all true, or if even some of this is true, we're not just talking about two people who were having a consensual relationship and one person got a little freaky and so, you know, there's nothing criminal about it. We're talking about potential, you know, criminal liability here. We are talking about potential crimes. We are talking about rape. We are talking about sex trafficking. It's absolutely disgusting. And you have these people who, oh, well, you know, just have them sign an NDA. That way we can sweep it under the rug. And, it, and Vince McMahon and WWE, this whole situation, it hardly is something, you know, limited to Vince McMahon. I mean, this sort of thing, unfortunately, uh, probably happens a lot more than you and I even know. But I just think it's, it's absolutely disgusting, you know, that you can do something like that. And how many people get away with this on a regular basis? How many stories are out there, whether it be wrestling or other industries, other companies that we will never know about? Because people felt like they didn't have a choice but to sign a non-disclosure agreement, take a little bit of money and keep their mouth shut. There are people out there that need to be held accountable that we'll never know about. But we know about this. And there's a lot of other very explicit, disgusting details in here. The lawsuit also talks about having panic attacks. This woman had panic attacks and she confided in Vince what was going on, how she was feeling, her health was declining. And she ended up going to Vince McMahon's weird physician that, you know, again, they, they term it as a celebrity doctor in the suit. Uh, in addition to her panic attacks, she began experiencing increasingly severe physical, mental, and emotional symptoms, including sleep disruption, dizziness, exhaustion, rashes, weight loss, hair loss, and migraines. Ms. Grant informed McMahon that her doctor suggested her symptoms stem from trauma and ongoing stress. McMahon mocked her, emotional trauma my ass. However, McMahon insisted that Ms. Grant see a physician of his choosing. This physician is referred to as the celebrity doctor who is at this quote unquote alternative clinic. And the suit claims that her trauma and fears of additional retaliation were so severe that she required extended inpatient treatment. Today, she lives with so much anxiety and depression that she is unable to leave her residence for weeks at a time out of fear and PTSD. Due to this trauma and inability to leave her home, she was terminated last January. We got a statement from her lawyer, Ann Callis, of the Holland Law Firm. This is what her attorney had to say yesterday. Today's complaint seeks to hold accountable two WWE executives 
who sexually assaulted and trafficked plaintiff Janelle Grant, as well as the organization that facilitated or turned a blind eye to the abuse and then swept it under the rug. She is an incredibly private and courageous person who has suffered deeply at the hands of Mr. McMahon and Mr. Laurinaitis. Ms. Grant hopes that her lawsuit will prevent other women from being victimized. The organization is well aware of McMahon's history of depraved behavior, and it's time that they take responsibility for the misconduct of its leadership. We got a statement later in the day yesterday from Vince McMahon, spokesperson for him, saying, This lawsuit is replete with lies, obscene, made-up instances that never occurred, and a vindictive distortion of the truth. He will vigorously defend himself. And finally, a spokesperson for TKO, the parent company of WWE and UFC, said, Mr. McMahon does not control TKO, nor does he oversee the day-to-day operations of WWE. While this matter predates our TKO executive team's tenure at the company, we take Ms. Grant's horrific allegations very seriously and are addressing this matter internally. You know, a couple years ago, we had that first bombshell Wall Street Journal story that came out. It just ro- it rocked the entire wrestling world, right? This, I mean, this turned everything upside down. For the first time, we were in a situation where Vince McMahon might actually be gone. This is so serious that this could be what finally sinks this guy because he's been Teflon for so many years, whether you go back to the steroid trial, there have been other allegations against him. There have been numerous allegations against him over the years, going all the way back to 1986 with Rita Chatterton, the first female referee in WWE who flat out accused him of raping her in the backseat of his limousine. And she confided in at least one wrestler at the time when the story happened, she was a, she was a mess. And then later on, years later, came forward with her story because her parents had passed away. She had wanted to wait until her parents passed away, didn't want them to know about what happened to her, and then went public. This was around 1992. And of course, you know, at the time, oh, she's just lying and trying to get money and all this other stuff. But her story, her story was consistent over the years. Her story never changed. So it goes all the way back to at least then. There was another incident, I think around 2006, which would have been 20 years later with a uh, at Tanzibar, which is not even there anymore. It was a tanning salon down in Florida with a, a tanning booth uh, attendant there who also accused him of some ridiculous shit. To the point that she had to go run next door. There was like a Papa John's next door and she was in tears and had to go run next door to let them know what had just happened. And the police found that the allegations were credible enough to move forward and the prosecutors were the ones who decided against filing charges against him because they felt we just don't have the the evidence we might find her allegations credible but in the absence of photos or in the absence of video or some hard evidence like that they felt there's nothing we can do and so they didn't push it any further so that was in 2006 and then of course what we've been hearing over the last couple of years has been fucking disgusting All the NDAs, first it was $3 million, then it was like $10 million, then it was, oh, it might have been $20 million that he paid out to various women. Because again, somebody who has done absolutely nothing wrong would pay $20 million. And I don't want to hear the shit about how, oh, he's a billionaire, so $20 million to him is nothing. I'm sure Vince McMahon does not want to be throwing away tens of millions of dollars to people if he feels like he is being wrongly accused of things he did not do. After a while, when you start seeing a pattern developing here, it doesn't paint a very pretty picture. But what happened a couple of years ago when he had stepped down, it looked like we were finally rid of him. Triple H took over as the head of creative, and that lasted all of about five or six months. And then the story started to come out. That Vince McMahon, who posted that tweet, and I'll never forget it, that tweet is probably still up and it will live in infamy, on a random Friday afternoon, he tweets out, uh, what was it, I'm 70 years old or 71 years old, whatever it was, time to retire. Just like that, out of nowhere. Vince McMahon tweets his retirement. It sounded like bullshit then, it sounds like bullshit now. It sounded exactly like what the Wall Street Journal would later report, which is that he didn't want to step down. He felt pressured to step down. He was angry that he got forced into stepping down and now he wanted to come back in. He wanted to force his way back in. It seems like he's got a pattern over his life of forcing his way into things. He wanted to force his way right back into his position. 
his old position. The board of directors of WWE voted unanimously not, not to approve him coming back because they felt that it would be detrimental to the health of the company because they knew even just the allegations all piled up one on top of the other, the Wall Street Journal of all, of all places, coming out with these bombshell damning stories and dollar amounts and NDAs and Laurinaitis and oh my God, that's like a fucking sex ring being run out of this company. They didn't want that. They wanted him gone. He's too much of a distraction and too much of a liability. Unanimously. You know who was on the board at the time? Triple H, his son-in-law. Stephanie, his daughter. Nick Khan may have been on there. He didn't give a shit. Because he wants what he wants. He doesn't care about the health and welfare of the company, or he does up until a point. He wants what he wants. He craves power. He's always been the head honcho there. He craves power. That's, that's what allows people like him to prey on other people. Because he's in a position of power and he feels like he can do it. And he can get away with it. And if things get a little messy, he could throw some money at it and make it go away. So what did he do? Even though the board didn't want him back, he forced his way back on. He had those voting shares, which carried a lot of power at the time. Remember, he had a, a couple of different board members, I think, booted. One person resigned. Again, I don't have all the details in front of me to refresh my memory here. But basically, Mich Michelle Wilson and George Barrios, who he had fired previously, who worked for the company... He installed them on the board. They were basically puppets for him. And he was able to come back in. And all of a sudden, Vince McMahon was back. And all that goodwill that had been built up over the course of those few months that Triple H was running things creatively was washed away. Around WrestleMania that year, Vince McMahon is back, right? He's back on his perch. And Stephanie McMahon, who had been installed as the chairwoman and co-CEO with Nick Khan and was getting rave reviews, and there were people who liked Stephanie and liked working for her, and it was just a great atmosphere. It felt like a, just a different WWE behind the scenes, right? All these reports were coming out about how the employees felt happier, and they don't feel like they're walking on eggshells anymore. All that went away. Stephanie, very abruptly, as soon as it was made clear that Vince was coming back, she resigned. She left completely. She didn't just step down into another role. She said, I'm out of here. And I always thought that was very strange. And I've always wondered, from the beginning of all of this, when the anonymous email got leaked to the board and that kicked off this whole escapade, what did she know? She's obviously very close to the situation. She's very close to this person. It's her father. What did she know? And when did she know it? I always thought that was very strange, the way she just abruptly disappeared like that. But there was a federal search warrant that was executed last summer. There was a federal search warrant last year, and there was a grand jury subpoena that was served to him. How does that, if at all, tie into this? Because we never got any sort of clarity on what that was about. We, we haven't really gotten any clarity on what the status of that investigation is. Might that tie into some of what we're, we're talking about here with this story? I mean, we're talking about sex trafficking for crying out loud. What were they looking for? Were they looking for documents? Are they looking for text messages? We don't know. We still, we still have no clarity on that. But this is alleging more than just the boss sleeping around with an employee. And yet, and yet, you still have tons of people, and I've seen it, and I'm sure you've seen it as well, on social media over the last 24 hours who are going out of their way to defend this man. They're going out of their way. They're, they're spamming every possible news account and every person who says something about how this is disgusting and or he should be gone or, oh my God, this is vile. And you've all seen the comments under there, right? Well, innocent until proven guilty. Oh, so now we're going to convict this man. Oh, you know, you know, Vince, Vince has been accused of things before. He's never been arrested. So, right, just spamming down the wall, going out of their way to give a full-throated defense to Vince McMahon and to blame the victim and to blame the person that, you know, filed the claim and questioning, well, why did it take her so long to come forward with this? And she's only after money, only after he stopped payment on the payments he promised her on the NDA, of course, right now this person comes forward and now this person files a lawsuit. Let me, let me make one thing perfectly clear. 
All of that may be true. Maybe she filed this lawsuit when she did. Or she filed the lawsuit, period, because he stopped payment on the NDA and what was promised to her. Instead of $3 million, she only got a million of it. And he said three. So now she's suing him. And had he paid the money, maybe we wouldn't be sitting here talking about this. In fact, we might not very well be sitting here talking about this right now and having knowledge. I wish I didn't have knowledge of any of this stuff. This is fucking disgusting. This is embarrassing. The people who know what I do, that I do a podcast and I'm actually able to make a living on it and I talk about WWE and I talk about all this stuff. You know how fucking embarrassing it is? To people that I either work with or have worked with or friends of mine or casual fans who know what I do and they're like, they're reading stuff like this, like this is the person? This is the person that you talk about? This is the person whose product you've been watching for the last 30 some odd years? This is the shit that you spend your nights talking about on YouTube and doing a podcast for 16 years? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I said this just the other day, it wasn't even a week ago. I answered a question that somebody emailed me about the whole Girls Gone Wild pay-per-view that WWE did back in 2003. And I made a comment, I just talked about this, and I said, you know, as I'm reading through some of the things, and that's a whole other subject that, you know, they were having some of the, the, the women do on there. But I said, you know, I, I sit back sometimes and I ask myself, why, do, why have I, over all these years, continued to support this product and put money into these people's pockets? And I don't really have a good answer, other than, you know, I grew up a wrestling fan, I enjoy wrestling, and I don't have a good answer for you. But I read stuff like this, and it makes my fucking skin crawl. And it is embarrassing to be talking about this stuff. So for the people defending this man going out of their way to get down on their knees and do whatever it takes to support and defend like they're his fucking defense lawyer. Everything may be true that you're saying as far as the timing or why this is happening. It does not mean that what is being alleged in this lawsuit isn't true. One does not have anything to do with the other. And so, if you're going to go out of your way to tell people to pump the brakes before passing judgment on this man, but then in the same breath turn around and defend him in the way that I am seeing some people defending him vigorously, and then you also have some people, of course, well, you know, where would you be? Where would we all be without somebody like Vince McMahon? You know, he built this business, he built this company from the ground up. I don't give a fuck, I don't care. There is no defense for any of this. And I would be saying that about whoever was being accused of something like this. But in his case, we've been here before with the accusations and the allegations. This is just, I don't even know, I don't even know how to describe this. This is just, I was going to say the, the, the top of the mountain here, but who the hell knows? It might only get worse. We might hear about more shit in the future from other people. I hope not. But if that's how you're spending your day on social media, you're almost as bad as he is. This is a man who once pitched an incest storyline on television with his own daughter, which is something that we never would have known were it not for his own daughter on a DVD going ahead and telling the story. So we know that happened. And even she was weirded out by it. And so was his son. The same person who scripted a segment with him and Stephanie on television once where she accused him and talked about him pimping her out to his friends, which hits home a little bit, a little bit more than maybe it did back then in light of this lawsuit. That was an actual segment that aired on television. This is the same man who once scripted a segment with himself and Paul Heyman, where he told Paul Heyman that he wanted The Undertaker's wife to be raped by a motorcycle gang. This is the kind of sicko that we're dealing with here. And none of that is a secret. If, you're been, if you've been a fan for long enough, you saw the same segments that I did. And back then you might have chalked it up to, well, boy, this guy certainly has a very disturbing imagination. But it just hits a little bit differently now. In, the, in light of what we have heard about him over the last several years, Again, it paints a picture that it was staring us right in the face the entire time. This is who he is. This is the kind of sick, warped fucking mind 
that this man has. Whether it's a product of his upbringing or whatever it is, I'm not his therapist, so I don't give a shit. I just know that it is a very, very scary, disgusting place to be in the mind of Vince McMahon. There's something wrong with this man. And as he has gotten richer and more powerful over the years and his company has gotten so much bigger and more corporate, it seemingly has only gotten worse because it just enables him to continue to do the things that he has allegedly been doing this entire time. And he may feel Teflon. He may feel as if he's above it all because up to now, he has been. He's never been accountable for his actions. I mean, if even a tenth of the stuff that we have heard about him over the years is true, he has never truly been held accountable for any of the shit that he has done. So why wouldn't he feel like he's above it all? Why wouldn't he feel like he's above the law? And that he can do all of these things. This should not be a surprise to anybody. That, that kind of power corrupts. Now you take somebody who already has a sick, twisted, demented mind and you put that kind of power in their hands and this is the sort of thing that you end up with. We're not going to get any clarity from WWE at a Royal Rumble scrum. If they even have the scrum tomorrow. I can't, I can't imagine we even get one. But if they're going to do one, I can't imagine we're going to get anything. If somebody actually asked the question, and they absolutely should. You know, I don't go to these scrums. I've never applied for these scrums. I have no interest in going to these scrums. But if they're going to have one, you're going to have people there. And I, sh I sure hope... That somebody will ask the question, even though we already know we're not going to get a straight answer. It's a question that has to be asked. You have to make them feel uncomfortable. They should be made to feel uncomfortable until they give some straight answers about what they knew and when they knew it and what the hell is going on here. Because there are a lot of questions about who knew what and when. People on that board going back a couple of years, Triple H, Stephanie. Triple H has worked for this company for decades. He's been closer to Vince than maybe some of his own family members. Married into the family. And he was on the board. He was one of those people who would have voted unanimously for him not to come back in the first place. And yet we'll go out there in every interview when he gets asked and talk about Vince and praise Vince. and What did Triple H know? I would hate to think that he had knowledge of some of the stuff that we're talking about here that was going on. My attitude is, if we come to find out that there are people, I don't care how high up in the company they are, who knew that stuff like this was going on, or saw the photos, or saw the videos that were being shared, had any knowledge of this whatsoever, and didn't try to put a stop to it, or come forward and say something about it, then those people should be held accountable in some way too, whether in, in, in whatever way is appropriate. Maybe it's not legally, maybe it's with their job. People like that, who have knowledge of stuff like this, don't belong working for a company in a position of power, because all they do is enable that sort of thing. And I don't know that we'll ever get clarity to that question of who knew what and when. We may just have to wonder and speculate without getting any straight answers because I don't know how far this suit will go. I don't know if it will result in charges. We don't know anything yet. This was only just filed yesterday. We're still in the first inning of this. There is a lot that we still don't know. But one thing I do know is that this is going to follow everybody in the hierarchy of this company for months to come. If you think this story is going away, you're a fucking idiot. This story is not going away, and it shouldn't go away. Because, again, if even some of this is true, you can't sweep this shit under the rug. I don't care how, I don't care when it happened, how many years ago it was. And, again, if you read the lawsuit, we're talking about stuff that is alleged to have happened in the last few years. We're not even going back 10, 15, 20 years. This is stuff that was happening in the corporate tower during COVID, post-COVID. I say post-COVID, meaning, you know, when they started getting fans back in the buildings and things went back to some degree of normalcy. We're only talking in the last few years that this supposedly happened. Right under people's noses, you're going to tell me that nobody was aware of what was going on? I hope those people get outed too. Because they have no business working there. But, you know, again, this, from Triple H to Nick Khan to Ari Emanuel, to The Rock himself, who only joined the board a few days ago, right? Three days ago, he officially joined the TKO board of directors, and now he has to deal with this shit too. This is a stain on his name too, that he is 
now associated with this company that is in headlines for all the wrong reasons. And he's a guy who has cultivated a very positive image for himself. You know, he's very image conscious, him and his people. And so how must they be feeling right now on the heels of this news? He was just sitting there with Ari Emanuel on CNBC the other day talking about oh, how what a wonderful thing it is. His father would be so proud. His grandfather would be so proud. He grew up in this company. You know, The Rock has come home. Does The Rock want to be home? I mean, is this, is, is this a home that people should even be proud of being a part of? When you read stuff like this? He was on the New York Stock Exchange standing only feet away from this fucking deviant. I'm sure he's not feeling too good right now. One of the many reasons why Vince McMahon needed to be gone yesterday. He needed to be gone two years ago when this story first broke about the NDAs and the hush money payments in the Wall Street Journal. He needed to be gone. And the fact that we are even still sitting here reading about this and I'm sitting here talking about this is ridiculous. He's like a fucking horror movie villain. You think he's dead, he rises up. How many sequels? Every sequel is worse than the one that came before it. When does it end? If you're TKO, if you're Endeavor, I don't know if there's anything they can do. I've read conflicting things that there, there may not be anything that they can do other than trying to convince him to step down or resign on his own. His, his role is largely ceremonial as the executive chairman. He's not you know, in the trenches like he used to be. He's not running creative like he used to be. He's not at the shows every week. But they have to be having emergency meetings right now, trying to put their heads together and figure out what to do here. And I will say this, I have no sympathy for Ari Emanuel or anybody at Endeavor. Fuck them too. Because it's not as if when they entered into this deal that they didn't have knowledge that by having Vince McMahon as part of the package here, that there would be a lot of baggage that comes with that. We already know that because we know they knew that because it was in the financial filings with the SEC that this man could have harmful effects. The fact that he's even a part of this company could have a harmful effect on the overall company. It's not like they didn't know that. They went into this deal knowing that. Ari Emanuel went on television and said, in fact, not only, not only did he want Vince McMahon part of this deal, when they took over WWE and they were going to do the merger with WWE and UFC into TKO, it was contingent upon him being a part of this deal. He wouldn't have done the deal if his boy Vince wasn't a part of it. That's something that he insisted on. Oh, we're not going to do this. I want you to be part of this. So they're probably scrambling today trying to figure out what to do next. Good. I have no sympathy for them either. People who I have sympathy for obviously are any of the victims involved here with the, all of these alleged assaults and allegations. You know, it's, it's horrible. It is fucking disgusting. And I have sympathy for those people. I have sympathy for the good people who work in WWE. There are a lot of really good people, talent and otherwise, who work for that company. Not everybody in that company is a piece of shit or a creep. A lot of good people work there. How must they be feeling today? What, what's going through their minds? The thought that they work for these people, that they have worked for Vince McMahon in many cases, even for a number of years. And I don't know what they knew or didn't know, what they heard. Right? They may have had no knowledge of any of this shit that was going on. But I'm sure they don't feel too good. The longer he stays associated with this company in any way, shape, or form, it is a stain on every single person who works there. From the top all the way down to the very bottom to the people setting up the fucking ring for SmackDown tonight or the Rumble tomorrow. It affects everybody in that company in a negative, in a negative way. It puts them in a terrible, terrible light. And so... He's a liability for WWE. He's a liability for Endeavor. And at a time when they should be celebrating, right? This big billion dollar deal with Netflix that they just announced earlier in the week. And they're setting records left and right with all these gates and the attendance figures for all these big stadium shows. That's what they want to be talking about. They don't want to be talking about this stuff. All of it, every single aspect of it is marred by Vince McMahon. 
Netflix, by the way, is doing a documentary on his life. I think that's the Bill Simmons documentary, which they've already had to rework and retool in light of the most recent allegations. Now this comes out. At this rate, that documentary is never coming out. They're going to be redoing this documentary every year for the next 10 years. But I'll end with this, and then we'll get into the, the, the rumble predictions here, because frankly, I'm just fucking sick and tired of talking about this fucking guy. But I will say this. If even some of what we are reading in this suit is true, if any of this is even remotely true, if, if the text messages... If the text messages alone are legitimate, and they'll know. I mean, we saw screenshots of it, but they can tell. If they investigate this, they can tell if the text messages actually came from Vince McMahon's phone or not. If even part of this is true, he has to be gone. Even if you say, well, you know, what if, what if the assaults never took place? He was just talking dirty to an employee and, 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 and filthy doesn't matter. He's got to be gone. You can't have somebody like this associated with this company. He has to be gone. Finished. That's it. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. I don't care if they can prove only a handful of things. The sooner they can distance him from this company, the better off everybody will be. And the better off we will all be, frankly, for not having to talk about this fucking guy anymore unless he is going into a fucking jail cell. And that's a whole matter for the courts to decide if this gets pushed to that point, if he gets charged with anything. We'll see. We'll see. People have thought that before. It's never happened. We don't know yet how, how far they're going to push this and where this is going to go. But if TKO can't do anything... He has to, for the good of his own company, step aside. He has to do the right thing. Up to this point, he certainly has not demonstrated the desire or the ability to want to do that because it's all about Vince McMahon. It's not about WWE. But that's exactly what he should do. You know, we're on the road to WrestleMania right now. That's what the Royal Rumble is all about, right? You hear about the road to WrestleMania. Vince McMahon needs to be put on the road to obscurity. That's where he belongs. I don't, I don't even think there's, frankly, a good way to transition from that to my Royal Rumble prediction. I mean, how do you go from everything we just talked about to Royal Rumble predictions? But I did promise you that I would run through my predictions quickly here. It's, I mean, after all, it's why I flew down to this place here. Uh, I am down here. We are down here for the Royal Rumble. And so let us go ahead and uh, switch over to that. And I want to thank you, by the way. I, I announced this very late that I was even doing this stream. Came together very quickly. Obviously, I was going to go live. Um, and we have over 3,000 people with me right now on a Friday afternoon. So I thank you for that very much. Uh, I did turn on the, uh, the alerts. I had them. Do you feel him, sir? Yeah, that's exactly why I had them pause. So. <laughs> but thank you for anybody who, who has been supporting and really all week long. I mean, all the audio, all the shows, everything, you guys have been great, and uh, it really means a lot. I thank you for that. But let's talk about the Royal Rumble here, because uh, tomorrow is the pay-per-view. Only four matches announced, including the two Rumble matches, and before I even get into that, you heard me on uh, Twitter the other day respond to the Sports Illustrated report that came out. The rumors that Cody Rhodes is not going to finish his story at WrestleMania and the plans have changed and it's going to be Cody against Punk and it's right you you read that everybody's like are you going to talk about the Sports Illustrated report and I'll tell you what I said on Twitter I said I don't buy it because we're only a few days out from the Royal Rumble and that sounds like exactly the sort of thing the WWE and Triple H would want to leak to make you think that Everything has been blown up, and we're going to get Seth and Gunther, and we're going to get Cody and Punk, and we're going to get Roman and The Rock. And now Justin Barrasso of Sports Illustrated posted a note yesterday confirming that. He said, I reported spoilers for Sports Illustrated yesterday regarding the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania 40. I reported what was detailed to me by previously reliable sources. It appears that this was a deliberate attempt at misinformation. 
or misinformation that is being spread through WWE itself. I apologize for the errors in yesterday's report. When posting these reports, the entirety of the information needs to be accurate. Exactly. I, I never bought it in the first place. That's why I really didn't have anything else to say about it. But there you go. So anybody who's uh, wondering about the veracity of the Sports Illustrated report, and I'm surprised, frankly, that that wasn't written in AI, which I figured pretty much everything out of Sports Illustrated would be at this point. As I see uh, Daniel Garcia dancing on my screen there. Hey, th thank you to all of our new subs. Greg, thank you for becoming a member. I will not say thank you for that Brie mode, though. Who was that? <laughs> God of Seduction hits me with the Brie mode. All right, let's get into this uh, Royal Rumble pay-per-view here. Let's just start with the women's Royal Rumble match. Who do I think is going to win? If you would have asked me this question a few weeks ago when I did my predictions, I said Bailey. I want to see Bailey win the women's Royal Rumble. Bailey is, she's been there for so long, like Charlotte and Sasha was and Becky, and she's the only one that doesn't really have anything to hang her hat on on the main roster. When you think of what would Bailey's big accomplishment be on the main roster in WWE, I can't think of anything. I think back to Brooklyn. I think back to her match with Sasha Banks at TakeOver. That was in 2015. It's been almost a decade. And I still feel like she should win the Royal Rumble. But I've changed my mind. And I don't think she's going to win the Royal Rumble. I think that Becky Lynch is going to repeat and win the Royal Rumble. And I think that it's going to actually come down to Becky Lynch and Nia Jax as the final two. I think Becky will eliminate Nia. She'll get her revenge for that loss at day one at the beginning of the month. And Becky will pick up the win. Uh, they had six surprise entrants in last year's women's match, uh, including some NXT names. Michelle McCool has been in each of the last two women's Royal Rumble matches. Undertaker is in town this weekend. He's doing his one dead man show. Uh, I know this because we're actually going to be there. So that's on Sunday night. I'm sure she must be in town with him, which means she's around, which means wouldn't be shocked to see her pop up for a third time. But for this year's surprises, here's who I got. And feel free to chime in if you want to and let me know who you think might be the surprises. Uh, Jade Cargill, I said this a few months ago. I think that we will see Jade Cargill in the Women's Royal Rumble. I don't know that it'll be a full-time main roster call-up for her because I don't know that she's ready for that. Triple H said as much at one of the scrums a couple of months ago. He, he kind of, you know, without saying it directly, he basically bashed the training that she had in AEW and said that we didn't realize we were starting from the ground up with this woman. Uh, has she made enough progress in the span of six or eight weeks to get a main roster call up? I, I don't know, but I would expect her to be in the women's rumble. She'll probably rack up a bunch of eliminations before being eliminated herself by Bianca Belair. So that's one. Uh, I think we'll see Naomi. Naomi is free and clear of her obligations with TNA. She is done and she is free and clear to make her return. And that has been the scuttlebutt that she is coming back to WWE. This would seem like a good place for her to pop up. So I think we'll get Naomi. Uh, AJ Lee is another one who I believe we will see uh, in the Women's Royal Rumble match. Just something I have felt for a while that we'll see AJ Lee. And another name I would be surprised if we don't see, as far as I know, she is healed up and ready to come back, is Liv Morgan. So I think Liv Morgan will be a surprise in the uh, women's Royal Rumble match as well. I, in fact, not only do I think Liv Morgan will be in the Women's Rumble, I have her as my dark horse pick. So if I had to have a dark horse to win the Rumble, it's her. Because I do think that she is going to be challenging Rhea Ripley. I think it's going to be in Perth at the Elimination Chamber. Either one-on-one -on -one or in a chamber match for Rhea's title and both of them will be in there. And then Becky is the one who gets Rhea at WrestleMania. It could be flipped, though. It could be Rhea and Liv if they want to save Rhea and Becky as like a really big match to do in Australia. It could easily be flipped. But I'm going to stick with my prediction. Becky wins the Rumble. Liv returns in the Rumble. And she does get her match with Rhea, but it's next month. And Becky gets the match at WrestleMania. We have Logan Paul defending the United States Championship against Kevin Owens. Uh, they did the U.S. title invitational tournament. They did the storyline hand injury, the broken hand uh, that Kevin Owens has had. That will play into the finish of this match. It's the entire reason why the injury was even devised in the first place was to give him an out 
you know, for when he eventually goes on to lose to Logan Paul. I think that this will be a great match. Logan Paul has had a series of great matches in his time in WWE. Uh, and with Kevin Owens in there, I, th I feel like it would be impossible for the two of them not to. They just shot an angle. There was a, a pull apart with them at the Performance Center uh, the other day. I saw that. So Logan Paul is going to retain the U.S. title. I mean, come on. Logan Paul has not defended the U.S. title yet. He's not dropping it in his first defense. He has to hold on to it so that he can drop it to LA Knight at WrestleMania. So Logan Paul will retain. We have Roman Reigns defending the undisputed WWE Championship in a fatal four-way match against Randy Orton, AJ Styles, and LA Knight. And I thought that the match for the Rumble, when AJ came back, or even before AJ came back, I thought the match for the Rumble would be Roman and AJ. And then it was looking like, all right, maybe they're going to do Roman and Randy. And instead, we're getting a fatal four-way with both of them and L.A. Knight thrown in, who already lost once to Roman Reigns at Crown Jewel. I think that AJ will be the one to take the losing fall in this match because, again, I think originally I thought it was going to be Roman and AJ anyway. I would not be pinning L.A. Knight for a second straight time. He's already been pinned once. I don't want him in there just to take another pinfall to protect the other two. He needs to be protected more than someone, frankly, like Randy Orton or AJ Styles. They're made men. LA Knight is not yet a made man. He's getting there, but he's not there yet. And for Roman, or Randy rather, I think they might want to save that for an eventual singles match with him and Roman at some point. Uh, and so AJ taking the losing fall to me seems the likeliest scenario here. But think about what we're talking about here. We're talking about a match, not who is going to win. Who's going to be the champion coming out of this match? We already know who the champion is going to be coming out of this match. It's who's going to take the losing fall in this match, which I just think is a way that you never really want to go into your big title match on a pay-per-view, but here we are. So, of course, Roman Reigns is going to retain. Here's the bigger question. Even more than who takes the losing fall, does it close the show? Because if it closes the show, like Roman's match with Kevin Owens last year did, if it closes the show, I don't think it means he's losing the title, but I do think it means somebody is going to come out when the match is over. And if somebody comes out when the match is over, that person would be The Rock. So that'll be something to watch for. Do they put his match on last? If so, you're going to have people looking towards the aisle. I know I'll be looking towards the aisle. I'm going to be in that fucking stadium tomorrow. I'll be looking towards the aisle when that match is over to see who's coming out. Roman Reigns is going to retain. The least shocking prediction I've ever made. And finally, the Men's Royal Rumble match. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Cody Rhodes? Is it going to be CM Punk? Is it going to be The Rock? Is it going to be Noah the Mark who's sitting over here off to the side with that stupid hat on his head? Don't think I don't see that. Who's it going to be? Who's going to win the Men's Royal Rumble match? I did not want to see Cody Rhodes win for a second straight time. And I, I like Cody. I'm a fan of Cody's. But I don't think we need to see him win the Royal Rumble. He could very well lose, and he could go on to the Elimination Chamber if they do a men's chamber that he's in, and he could win the chamber. And he can win his way into the title match at WrestleMania. CM Punk is the other likely option. CM Punk just came back to the company. And so he has not even wrestled on television yet. This will basically be his first match back. He's done a couple of live events with Dominic Mysterio, but we have not seen him work. And he had suffered a couple of very serious injuries the last time we saw him in AEW. So it's a risk. If he comes back and he wins the Royal Rumble and you immediately vault him into a match in the main event of WrestleMania, night one or night two, it's a risk. I think that's where he's headed no matter what. So it's a risk the WWE likely feels is worth taking here because, again, he's automatically one of the biggest stars they have on that entire roster just by virtue of him coming back. But in the end, again, I've changed my mind from what I was thinking a few weeks ago. I was going with Punk and Bailey, and I'm going with Becky, and I'm going with Cody. I think we're going to have two people, both who have won the Royal Rumble before. I think Cody Rhodes is going to get the Royal Rumble uh, victory under his belt on Saturday. I think he's going to be the first person in, what was it, 26 years, 27 years, to repeat first person since Stone Cold Steve Austin. I think we're not going to get Cody and Punk as the final two. I think the final two, it comes down to Cody Rhodes and Drew McIntyre. 
Cody and Punk would make it more unpredictable as far as who's going to win. And then, of course, that might lead people to believe that we're going to get a Rumble 94 repeat as far as the finish, uh, which I hope not. John Cena and Batista kind of fucked things up for that finish with what happened in 05. Even though they weren't both supposed to go out of the ring at the same time, they did. And so they had a, they restarted the match, which they could have done in 94. The fact that they restarted the match in 05, I don't think you can really ever go back to that 94 finish and do it the same way without it just coming off very stupid. But I think it's going to be Cody and Drew. I, I've loved the work that Drew McIntyre has been doing on Raw. He's been easily one of the stars of that show now for at least four or five months love the work love the promo work too that he's been putting in improved on promos tremendously from even just a couple of years ago i think mcintyre is going to be the one who eliminates punk they had their own face-to-face on tv a few weeks ago so they have they kind of have an issue there together i think he'll eliminate punk that'll put so much heat on mcintyre it'll only amplify the reaction when cody eventually dumps out drew uh, and wins the Rumble. But what it also does, and my the way my mind works here, if you have Drew eliminate Punk and Cody wins the Rumble, so you just go with the easy option. You don't complicate things f- for, for Cody's path. Now you have Elimination Chamber in Perth. You could do Cody, or not Cody, you could do CM Punk against Drew McIntyre one-on-one, or you could do CM Punk and Drew McIntyre as the two key figures in an Elimination Chamber match to decide who goes on to challenge Seth Rollins for that world heavyweight title at WrestleMania. You've now established a beef between Punk and Drew that you can put the two of them together in the ring at the chamber next month and you give Punk his win there. And you still also have Drew in a situation where he's in a feature match as well, even though he doesn't win. So that's how I see that playing out. Now, as far as surprises in the men's Royal Rumble match, the first surprise I had on my list, and I put this together days ago, was Brock Lesnar. I thought that Brock Lesnar would definitely be a surprise in the Royal Rumble match. He may still be a surprise in the Royal Rumble match. And I had it where Brock would be the one to eliminate Gunther, which would light the spark for their eventual WrestleMania match, and you get Gunther and Brock at WrestleMania. In light of what we heard yesterday and the awful stuff I just read to you earlier on, Oh, it's Gunther. Look at this. Speaking of Gunther, you guys always time it just perfectly. Fahad, man, the timing on that is just incredible, I have to say. Fahad, thank you for the $58 super chat. Gunther thanks you. But what I was going to say is, in light of everything that I was just talking about, I would not have Brock Lesnar on this pay-per-view. I would not have Brock Lesnar, frankly, on any of my pay-per-views for the foreseeable future until this whole situation gets sorted out. Because even though he was not specifically named in that lawsuit, it's pretty clear who the individual she was referring to was. The former UFC heavyweight champion, and then again, some of the text messages and everything. He's lumped into this whole thing now. They don't need Brock Lesnar. If they want to keep him on the back burner for a while until this whole thing gets sorted out, that's exactly where he should be, on the back burner. But I don't know if WWE will make that call. They may, they may basically stick their finger in their ear, both ears, and pretend for the time being that it's business as usual and go on with whatever their existing plans were. But if it were me, I certainly would not be uh, throwing Brock Lesnar out there in the Royal Rumble tomorrow. Andrade. Andrade appears to be coming back to WWE. It's only a matter of when, not if. I think we see Andrade in the Men's Royal Rumble match. Uh, And I think we'll see people like Sheamus and Sami Zayn and Rey Mysterio. Uh, I don't know if you would consider them to be big surprises because they they have been on the active roster uh, up until recently. They've been out, you know, nursing injuries or in Sami's case, I think it was a storyline injury. Uh, But I do think that all of them will be in the Royal Rumble. And if Ray is in there, I think he gets eliminated by his son. I think his son will eliminate his deadbeat dad. And that's it. It's a short card. Four matches. There you go. Those are my Rumble predictions. You can let me know yours. Uh, You want to send in a message. You want to drop a comment in the comment section at the end of this. By all means, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I should tell you. Actually, before I get into some of the uh, scheduling stuff. There is one more piece of news I did not have a chance to talk about or or tweet about or anything. 
because again, I fly, I, I walk out my front door and of course the world blows up. We've talked about Kevin Patrick and how he was really in the hot seat. PW Insider had a note about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago maybe, maybe, maybe longer, maybe three weeks, that said internally, they were taking the training wheels off. They took Michael Cole off of SmackDown so that it would only be Kevin Patrick and Corey Graves and that he was really going to have to show something or his job could very well be in jeopardy. That was the word about him a few weeks ago. And we got the, we got the word the other day that he was being taken off of SmackDown. Michael Cole is going to be filling in for him tonight next to Corey Graves since he's in town anyway. And I don't think they've made any final decision about who's going to take the spot. I think Vic Joseph is going to eventually end up in that chair. If it doesn't happen now, it will happen at some point. I don't know if they're going to want to look outside the company and bring another sports personality in. Uh, I don't know. But he was being taken off of SmackDown. And frankly, it just wasn't working out. It's not the right role for him. He had done backstage stuff before. He had done pre-show panels. He was good at that. And a lot of people figured that that was what he was going to be relegated to. He was going to go back to doing uh, behind-the-scenes stuff or on-camera stuff in the back to do interviews. Well, we got word. PW Insider uh, had the report that WWE made the decision this past week that Kevin Patrick is not only not going to be on SmackDown going forward, he has been released. He is no longer with WWE. So Kevin Patrick will not be announcing, he will not be interviewing, he will not be hosting, uh, he will not be doing anything for WWE. Uh, which is too bad because, again, there were other things that he could very easily do. This just wasn't the right role for him. TKO wanted to go in a different direction, and that's what they're going to do. It doesn't change the fact that over the past year, or however long it has been, it just wasn't working out. He was not the right voice for Raw. He was not the right voice for SmackDown. So I'm sorry that he's no longer with the company. I can't say that I'm shocked. I mean, I, I'm surprised they didn't just slot him in somewhere else. I think he was also co-hosting the After the Bell podcast, or I know he was at some point with uh, Corey Graves. Uh, he might have still been co-hosting with Corey Graves. And so there were definitely other things for him to do. They felt differently, and he is no longer with WWE. So that is the update on Kevin Patrick. Now, tomorrow is the Royal Rumble. Uh, I will be in attendance. I will be going live this weekend. I'll be right back here in this chair with all of you. And uh, we're going to be talking about the Rumble. I don't know for sure if it will be late tomorrow night. That is my goal. The goal is to go live late. It may, it may be after 1230. It could be 1 o'clock in the morning. We'll see how I'm feeling. We'll see you know, what, what, what's going on. Uh, or it may just be that I delay things until... Sunday afternoon and that either way that is going to be your sound off for this weekend I, I I don't want to sit here and tell you there will not be another sound off I have already fucked up twice this week by telling you that unless there's a reason for me to come on here and do another sound off that I wasn't going to I was going to try to enjoy my vacation which has been ruined right it's been ruined get over here there are some people who are asking about this guy. When was the last time I even had you on one of my shows? No, Noah the Mark used to be part of these roundtables. When we would go on the road, and we would go to WrestleMania, and we would do... Am I, am I unbanned? I, I guess you are. I don't know. He's got a bottle of... He, look Hi, at, everybody. Look at this fucking hat Hi, that this everybody. guy has. This is the shit that I have to put up with. Now you know why I haven't had him on camera in how many years? How many years has it been? Oh my God, Solid Monster. We we were trying to figure this oh out. Light over. Come on, give me some room here. Let me let me let me see the my piece. Show. Hi everybody. What's going on here? It's my right. God. I did a little setup. You want some of the bubbly here? I I'll have okay. some later. <laughs> They're all up in my personal space now. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. So uh, we Lord. think it was maybe the Royal Rumble 2016. We did like that was before you did live streams, and that was yeah. back when. Yeah. Um, you know, well, 2016, you... we were in Dallas for the live show. So. Yeah, but Royal Rumble 2016. No, I, yeah, no, that's right. Oh, right, right, right. right. Yeah, but okay, yeah. so all right, so maybe the uh, maybe the no, Dallas, man. yeah, maybe that's no, the man. last time I you banned me since then or something. You're you're worse yeah. than uh, CM Punk on Collision. Yeah. See, we have, we 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 have other guests here as well, but they're nice enough to actually stay out of my personal space and stay off camera where they belong. And I brought you a gift. Show. No, I know. I appreciate it. You know I brought you a gift? I brought you a gift. I know. I know. You I do? Know. I know. Yes. No, I, not me. I have an actual gift for you here. 
Check this out. I figured this would be a cool desk ornament. Oh, very interesting. This might be reversed it there for the fans, but basically is this reversed. is a official Rawlings Royal Rumble baseball since we're at wow. the baseball stadium where the All Tampa right. Bay Rays that? play. Yeah, the Tampa Bay Rays. I Fuck figured, the Rays, by the way. Um, I figured this kidding. would be a cute uh, little token. I got one for you. I got one for our mutual friend Andrew who's here with us. Oh, man. One for myself. Royal Rumble baseball. There you go. Yeah. Maybe if I give this baseball to the Mets, maybe it'll be like a magic baseball that will actually be kind to them this season. What do you think? Maybe, right? Well, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that very much. Well, thanks for, thanks for uh, you know, actually taking a vacation, although, again... I know. Well, that was the plan. The plan was that I would actually go on a vacation where we are going to do no wrestling shit Thursday and Friday. We we're going to hit the beach and do whatever else. And I, I don't know. I had all kinds of ideas in my head, and then Vince McMahon... You know, his head ruined everything. So, so what we need to do next time is like a cruise or something where I take your phone and you just you're just terrible. completely disconnected. And then when you turn it on the phone terrible. the next time, the notifications that I'm sure will come through. Yeah, I'm just gonna turn my phone off. I won't have my phone on at all. I'll just turn it off, and that way I, I don't have to know what's going on. I like it. that's all. All well, right, do your right. thing, buddy. We got some. I'll be over here. Yeah. Goodbye. Whatever. Get out of here. How dare you? Move your chair too. My oh, God. Sorry. God, you're in my camera frame. There we go. All right, let us um, let me go through your messages here because you guys have been sending in Super Chats, which I very much appreciate. Uh, I didn't even mention it, but you guys are uh, always showing some love, so I want to say thank you for that. Let, let, let's, let's do this. Let's uh, switch on over to the slide. There we go. All right, now we got you. Now we got you. All right. Let's see what you guys are talking about. Like Cody, what do you guys want to talk about? What do you guys want to talk about? Wow, there's a lot of them here. Oh boy. All right, let's... Uh, the Real CS. Yeah, you and me too. It says, when is enough enough? I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It just seems to get worse and worse. Uh, Anderson Blitz says... Uh, he sees Vince trending and says, oh shit, here we go again. Yeah. Tyler, do you really think Mercedes shows up tomorrow? I don't. I do not see her in the Royal Rumble. Uh, Nick Grasso, the things I read were so disgusting that it made me sick. I don't know how TKO does not terminate him after all this and what happens to Brock Lesnar. Does he face any repercussions? Time will tell as far as uh, Brock. My guess is probably not, but I certainly would not throw him out there in the Royal Rumble tomorrow. Uh, Steady Sphere, Pixel Empire video reviews with a $12 super chat. Thank you for all your hard work this week, Mr. No Days Off. Sorry that one of the few times I have caught you streaming live is for this. This is horrid news. Steady Sphere, thank you very much. Very kind of you. Evan Watson, Roman did not pin the champion, uh, Bray Wyatt, in 2020 to win the title. Would it be so bad if he wasn't pinned tomorrow night to lose it, make it full circle? It would be awful. It would be absolutely terrible. Yes, it would be. Because Bray Wyatt was not champion for three and a half years. <laughs> You're leaving that little part out. So, yes. When, Roman, when, when the Roman Empire finally falls... It needs to be at the hands of someone directly, not indirectly, where he loses his title because somebody else eats the pin. Can't happen. W.S. Fletcher, thank you, Solo. This is disgusting. Vince constantly makes it hard to be a wrestling fan. I'm telling you, it's very embarrassing. Very embarrassing that all the headlines this week now are about WWE Vince McMahon defecating and, and trafficking and, I mean... Just bottom of the barrel fucking terrible shit. And WWE is right there. And this is what their concern also has to be. Their name is right there. They get dragged into the mud right along with him because he's been the king for so long. It's it's repulsive. Mr. E, 1976. Uh, here's to the tip jar. Thanks for everything you do. Thank you, Mr. E. Tay Tay the Savior. Vince McMahon is disgusting. He needs to be removed. Yet yeah, uh, ASAP. Again, I, I'm not sure legally if they have uh, the recourse for doing so. If they do, the announcement should have been made yesterday. They should have put a statement out. It should have happened 24 hours ago. 
but we'll wait and see what happens on that. Uh, Broncos, Broncos uh, FA. So happy to see you, but feel bad that you had to do this on vacation, but thank you to the Goat of Wrestling Podcast. Bronco, thank you. Alexander Fitzgerald Lance Storm spoke on this yesterday, and I totally agree with him. He said anyone involved or who tried to sweep it under the rug needs to go. Absolutely. We come to find out that there are some people high up in that company who were aware of this and either actively tried to help hide what was going on or just ignored it and turned a blind eye to it. Whoever that person is, whoever those people may be, I agree, they should be gone too. And that's a pretty scary thing when you consider the people on top who may well have had knowledge of what was going on. It could have a catastrophic effect on this company. But that's what needs to be done. Jazz Jackrabbit, Vince preyed on someone in grief. Fucking scumbag and criminal. TKO called it horrific. So at least they know it's serious. He needs jail time. And that's the thing. I mean, that's that's what predators do. Predators prey. That's what Vince McMahon is. Base Beerus, God of Seduction, isn't Laurinaitis related to the Bellas? Uh, he He's married to uh, the Bellas' mom. So yeah, he married into that family. It says, Atlas once implied that the Bellas were into uh, what Vince is also allegedly into. If Brock is involved, it leads one to wonder about Brian and Cena. Unfortunately, all these guys, all these all these top names who are, are so close to Vince McMahon and, and have gone out even in recent years after the last batch of allegations to celebrate his birthday, right? John Cena came out to celebrate his birthday and Brock and Undertaker. You know, they're, they're all tied into him and it makes you wonder. A story like this instantly has you wondering, well, who else might know about this or who else might be involved? And even if they don't, they kind of get sucked into the vortex that is Vince McMahon. And unfortunately, that's what happens. So I, I would certainly hope not. He says also, I don't, uh, he says, I don't believe anything until conclusive proof. Christopher Tam, you know where I read the story, I was, or when I read the story, I was thinking also about the lawsuit Sable filed when she first left WWE in 99, which was about sexual harassment. I'll tell you what I thought about. I, it made me think of Ashley Massaro. That's what it made me think of. And uh, everything she went through in her time with the company and some of the things that were alleged to have happened there and overseas, and we don't need to get into that now, but... I thought about her. Uh, Chris Ludek, you know it's bad when sexist Jim Cornette is not defending Vince for this. I have not seen his take yet. I have not heard what he has said. I mean, was he was he going after him or was he defending him? I have no idea. I have not seen what Cornette had to say. Uh, less than Pulp. I've been listening since 2016. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Thank you, Pulp. Less than pulp. It's not even pulp. He's less than pulp. Uh, the Undertaker, 2024. I would find it hard to believe that other wrestlers didn't know this was going on. They should be held accountable as well, in my opinion. Jazz Jackrabbit uh, says, uh, exited position on TKO today. I don't know what that means. Embarrassed as a fan, though, he says. Base Beerus, Heidenreich, and Cole came to Vince in a dream. Unfortunately, I think Vince was uh, dreaming about some uh, sick shit long before that. Miz fan, 2598, you've consistently been the most level-headed wrestling-related personality online. Always telling it like it is, sad day to be a wrestling fan. It is. And it really casts this whole shadow over this whole weekend. It really does. Like... It just feels weird to be sitting here and, and to be getting excited about the Royal Rumble when you have the specter of this just kind of hanging over the entire thing. Because honestly, the Royal Rumble and Netflix and, and Live Gates and all this stuff, it, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, when you really think about what we're talking about here, none of this shit means anything. You know, I mean, relative to that, Tay Tay says, this is the same Vince McMahon who did the Kiss My Ass Club, kissed multiple divas on screen, mocked God. The list goes on. Vince is Satan. Base Beerus says, we are on the road to WrestleMania. 
Jazz says, what the fuck happened with that WWE investigation of Vince McMahon? Uh, that was a third party investigation um, that according to WWE was completed. As far as who they interviewed and what the nature of the investigation was and how, how, how extensive it was, we don't know. Uh, Devin Gersoff. I sent an email to the Wall Street Journal writers in April asking them to dig up more dirt on Vince. They finally took me up on it, but now I want to bleach my eyes out. Uh, Base Beer says, remember the Ring Boys. Yes, indeed. That was, that was a very big scandal in the early 90s. Christopher, I remember Ari Emanuel was talking trash about CAA in regards to Harvey Weinstein. 2024 doesn't look good for the TKO group with this and the antitrust lawsuit against UFC going to trial. Yeah, they got their hands full with a whole lot of things right now. DHV Smoke and Trees. Remember Vince's birthday party that year? All those people must have known. Oh, I just mentioned the birthday party. It was, it was in Manhattan. Cena was there, Undertaker, Brock. Scotty Clash. <clears throat> on my way to Tampa now. Hope to see you there. M. Mills, thank you for the $5. Fahad, again, thank you for the $58. PPK Nexus, any chance of having a meetup with fans in the area this weekend? P.S. I notice you've been enjoying the weather. Normally it is about 20 degrees cooler this year. I have not been enjoying the weather because we actually have <laughs> we haven't really been out during the day I only got in I got in late yesterday because my flight was delayed by four hours and uh, yeah ho hopefully today hopefully as soon as I'm done here we'll be able to go enjoy some of the weather uh, I'm gonna talk about the meet close that window I'm gonna talk about the meetup uh, here in a second JDF my reaction is simple Vince piss off dirty Joe have you heard someone ate my Taco Bell on TikTok? I have not uh, base beer is Todd Grisham should have called Punk's return. Todd Grisham? No. Uh, Ali, 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 just when you thought you were out. I know. Tell me about it. MLK10, Cody goes coast to coast and wins from number one. You could start with Cody and Punk. They could be one and two if you want to do it that way. But I, we had, uh, well, Gunther entered at one last year, right? He went over 70 minutes. Cody entered at 30, which I... I thought even them was stupid. I, I I don't know that Cody has to be number one, but if you wanted to start with Cody and Punk, you could do that. Uh, power spying games. Will Vince be removed from Be the Booker? <laughs> uh, maybe. I, I don't know. I haven't thought about Be the Booker. It hasn't even crossed my mind. Paul Carpenter. We should have uh, gotten a New Day Imperium match, at least for the pre-show. And Prince Vegeta. 95. Is Brock going to be blacklisted? Just joined in now. Have no idea what you said concerning the situation. Uh, we just don't know. We don't know what is going to happen as far as Brock Lesnar is concerned. If you were to ask me right now, what do I honestly think? Do I think this man is going to be blacklisted? No. I don't. But the fact that... And he's not... Again, I have to stress this. He is not named. His name is not mentioned. Other than, I think, in the journal, they, they said, according to sources, it's Brock Lesnar. And if you just read the description of the person being described in the suit, clearly it's a reference to Brock Lesnar. He's not actually named or charged in the suit. The suit is against Vince and Johnny, uh, I was going to say Johnny Laurinaitis. You know, when you're his fucking age, you're not Johnny anymore. John Laurinaitis. Um, so, again, he's not directly implicated here, but it's not good. It's not good. It's, it's, it's vile is what it is so is he going to be no I don't think so but look there there are a lot of things I've thought before that end up not happening here I thought that you know Vince was finally going to be sunk when the first round of Wall Street Journal stories came out and here we are Jacqueline Fowler your dynamite review from January 11th I predicted Vince would be ousted again in 2024 felt I just rewatched Martyrs and Human Centipede part two after I read the Wall Street Journal I didn't really want to be reminded of Human Centipede, but thank you very much. Uh, the Yeet Master, thank you for the super chat. His uh, first super chat, Yeet, to you. And we have King of Doug Style. 
which is uh, going to pop up here in a second, having his talent def defile a corpse and wanting to have his daughter's baby in storyline. Who knew he was even more fucked up than that? A sad day. A sad day indeed. Sad and, uh, and disgusting. And Devin Garcia, hey Solo, thanks for all your hard work, especially this week. What do you do with Gunther in the Royal Rumble and Mania if Brock gets kept off of TV? Well, I don't see Gunther winning the Royal Rumble. So it's just a matter of they're going to have to recalibrate and figure out a plan B. And there is a plan B. And that plan B is called Chad Gable. If they had to fall back on a plan B, I'm just saying there is a story there. It may not have the marquee value that Gunther and Brock would have had, but there is a story to be told and a match to be done at WrestleMania. So you could always fall back on that. Thank you guys for the super chats. I very much appreciate it. Uh, I will tell you that tomorrow uh, I am going to be, well, I think the plan is that we'll stop by. We'll stop by Ferg's, which is a, a sports bar and grill across the street from Tropicana Field. It's nothing formal. We're just, we're going to show up there. I'll probably just be hanging out there for a little while. And there may be other stuff going on there. There might be another party going on there. I, I don't know anything of that, but probably going to be there. So if you're going to the Rumble and you want to pop out or pop in across the street, uh, and you see me, come over and say hello. I guess that's where uh, we will be congregating. So I look forward to seeing some of you there. And again, the Rumble review will be going up this weekend. I'll be live. I don't know if it'll be late Saturday or during the day Sunday, but watch for it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I will be giving you something uh, that you cannot find anywhere else. I'm going to be giving you the first person perspective on being inside Tropicana Field for the Royal Rumble. The live experience. My first WWE live experience in five years. And it should be a good show. So uh, until then, be well. Stay safe. Thank you again for all your support. I hope you guys are, uh, are having a very good weekend. If you are in Tampa, enjoy the weather. We're going to go try to do that right now. And uh, I will see you tomorrow at some point for the Royal Rumble recap. Until then, take care, guys. Cameron, Cameron, look at you. Cameron, you're a late, you're a late bloomer here. Cameron Spencer is in with a 499. Wants to know who should dethrone Roman? Rocky, Cody, or Draymond Green? You know the answer is Cody. Why ask the question that you already know the answer to? The answer is Cody. The answer is <laughs> The answer is Cody Rhodes. All right, I'm out of here. Take care, guys. Hey, I need oh. that baseball back. That was just a prop. I really didn't have a present for See, you. See, I knew he didn't actually I get me a gift. Oh, we're still on the air. Oh, you're supposed to hit the button. Hit the button. Wait, we have another super chat. Oh. Uh, Holiday 197. After these allegations, Vince will need to go, and I don't see Lesnar returning tomorrow or him against Gunther at Mania. Also, no Raw brand exclusive matches for the Royal Rumble. I don't think we have ever had this before. Uh, I think you may be right. I don't. I don't think we have either. Four matches is a uh, very short card, which tells me that we're probably getting two very long Royal Rumble matches. So let's hope they make them exciting. All right, I'm out. Peace. Thank you for the love. I'll see you guys tomorrow.